my name is Steven Crane, and this is my 3D platformer level in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, the whole purpose of this level was to really kind of dive into the matinees and really throw uh, all that I could at it for uh, all intents and purposes for uh, sheer quantity uh, of moving objects within a single matinee, um, as well as use utilizing uh, many small matinees uh, in defined detail to really kind of um, change up some of the gameplay style uh, while still achieving the same kind of uh, gameplay. Uh, so let's jump right into this. Uh, once again, as always, I kind of have this uh, starter room where you interact with the uh, first console here, and that actually sets your checkpoint um, so that if the player dies, uh, that they will respawn at the previously uh, interacted console. Uh, so if the player dies after interacting with this console, they'll actually respawn at the console. Um, the player does have 100 health. Uh, the only hazards that I have in my level is the water. The water is uh, toxic. It does 5 damage per second, meaning that the player has to be within the water for 20 seconds uh, to completely take full damage and die from it. Um, I do have it set up so that if the player dies, they actually are revived to one health instead of full health. Um, that way, uh, if the player is really struggling to the point where they've been in the water that much, um, they simply die upon touching water uh, and then respawn at the last checkpoint. Uh, it's to kind of aid the player and speed up the process of them uh, getting back into the puzzle instead of having to constantly climb back out. Uh, the long way, uh, just it's kind of a shortcut mechanism. Anyways, so this first uh, hallway, uh, just real simple matinee. Uh, I have some columns come up here that the player has to jump across to get from one side to the other. Um, something to note is that for these matinees, um, there were kind of two things that I incorporated um, that were a little bit different than some of my previous ones. Um, I did end up disabling um, the player's interaction or uh, the player's control over the character while the matinee was occurring. Um, this way, uh, since the player can't necessarily always see where the character's at, they don't end up losing the player uh, on accident or putting them in a hazardous location, um, not knowing it. Uh, so I do remove control uh, from the player of the character uh, and then reinstate it once the matinee is complete. Um, how I do that is I simply unpossess the uh, character and then I have a timer delay that is timed to match the uh, length of the matinee uh, and then I repossess the character so the uh, player can once again control the character. Uh, aside from that uh, I utilize a little bit more uh, camera movement in the matinees. Um, I do still have some static cameras, as you can see here. Um, in this first one, uh, there's not a whole lot of camera movement. Um, however, getting into the next puzzle room, uh, I utilize a lot more camera movement, uh, simply so I can show the player all of the moving pieces, all of the columns that are creating the puzzle that uh, the player will then interact with. Uh, Aside from that, I also kind of use it to hint at what the correct path to take is. Um, I usually try to focus on the end goal and uh, show the player kind of a lot of the actual path within the camera uh, angling. Uh, that way they can really focus on one, the objective, which would be the red lights in this room, um, wanting to turn them to green. Um, and so, with the camera focusing on particularly one over the other, uh, it kind of gets that mindset for the player to go inherently to that one uh, versus others. Um, also, by getting more of a chance to look at the columns within the shot of the camera, uh, the player can kind of figure out the path a little bit easier, um, simply because they've had more time to look at it uh, as it's being constructed. Uh, something to go over for this room. Uh, it does have five consoles in it. Once again, the player, if they die, they will respawn at the console that they last interacted with. Um, aside from that, uh, they do have to interact with all five consoles in a sequential order. 
Um, however, once they interact with uh, one console, uh, the light on that console changes from red to green. Um, if the player goes back to the first console here and resets it, um, because I did include that as an option, you can reset the progress by going back to the first console. Um, here's kind of the logic for it. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it's pretty in depth. Uh, but if they do reset the paths uh, and the puzzles of this central room, um, it will actually turn all the other consoles' lights back to red, uh, showing the player that they need to once again reach those consoles and reactivate them. Once all five consoles have been activated, it uh, creates a path out of the room. Uh, leading into the final puzzle room um, so that the player can proceed from there. Um, something else that I kind of wanted to quickly touch on here before we get into some of the gameplay and move forward is not only did I add the uh, disabled player, um, but here is some of the checkpoint logic. Um, this console, as you can see, is a pretty detrimental one um, simply because it is the one that will reset uh, everything. Uh, so not only does it reset the progress by determining which path is currently active and then um, reversing that matinee um, and then playing the original path one matinee, um, it takes in consideration the time of the combined two matinees um, for disabling the player um, as well as it resets the checkpoints. Um, once again, changing all their lights from back from green to red. Um, however, I do have it hard-coded in that if either the first path or the final path, these two, um, if either one of them are active, um, I make it so you can't interact with the console. It just simply goes to uh, disable input so the player can't uh, try to keep interacting with it and it doesn't waste some of that processing power, so a little bit of optimization there. Um, but so yeah, uh, if the player goes through and activates all five consoles, I don't want them to accidentally trigger the reset console. Um, it is right in front of the very bottom of the path leading to the exit of the room, um, so I don't want the player to accidentally trigger something. So I do disable it once all five consoles have been activated. Um, but so yeah, that's that's about it that I really uh, wanted to show you for this uh, particular room here. Um, I'll show you a little bit more um, when I get into the gameplay. Uh, the fourth and kind of last console, getting from the fourth to the fifth, uh, that matinee is the one that I've really packed full of a lot of different moving objects. Uh, let me open it up here quickly. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, I have 53 uh, unique moving objects, if I can open this up, um, that are all 53 columns, uh, as well as a camera uh, that moves along this path and rotates uh, to kind of show the player all that's going on, all that's changing within the room, um, as well as to kind of show the primary path to get from the fourth, or from the fourth console to the fifth. Um, with this final one, I'll kind of go over it when I get into the gameplay um, and show you, but there are two paths for it. Um, the easier path kind of being along the edge of the map, making an L shape, all the way to this console. Uh, the other kind of going a little bit more through the mid and then ending up over here at this wall um, and then having to make kind of a long elevated jump to another column kind of over here. Um, and then back up to the wall and finally to the console. It is a little bit more difficult to jump. It's a jump that the player might not think is possible until they really try it. Um, so it is kind of the pinnacle of difficulty in the level. Um, however, once the player gets to the fifth console, uh, it does activate just a simple bridge from the first console all the way up to the exit, uh, leading them to the next room. Uh, this n next uh, and final puzzle room is a little unique. Um, this is the room where I really utilize the individual matinees, as you can see here <laughs> with all of these. Um, there are a ton. Uh, and the point of that was simply I wanted more control over individual matinees where I can use them all in a larger script. Um, 
to construct the room uh, and then use them all individually so that uh, when the player steps on these panels that are used to finish the floor and finish constructing the room, uh, that the floors uh, will actually fall away because they're false floors, um, forcing the player to fall to their death and restart at the beginning of the room. Um, so by utilizing more of individual matinees, I was able to accomplish that. Let me quickly open up this script, kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, so as you can see here, I control all of these matinees um, through the script itself um, with one second interval delays between each section. Um, so the first group of false panels will reconstruct themselves uh, and then a second later the next group will, second after that the next group, the next group, and the next group until the room's completed. Um, and then it, the camera pans again to the end of the hall where the final door opens up uh, leading the players to the exit room. Uh, so that's pretty much the whole design concept behind this level. Uh, let me hop right into it and kind of show you firsthand uh, the results of all this script and all these matinees. Um, as you can see here, or as you can hear, uh, I'm tapping the WASD keys and you can see the little red character at the end of the hall isn't moving, he isn't responding. Uh, once this matinee completes, you'll see me kind of jiggle around here. Yep, there it goes. So, as you could see, uh, during the matinee, players simply disabled. Uh, it doesn't read the inputs, the character controller is removed, um, and then it's reinstated once the uh, matinee has been completed. Um, here, I'll jump down into the water. As you can see in the upper left-hand corner, water is toxic, uh, so the player knows that touching the water uh, damages them um, and will eventually kill them. So, something else that I kind of didn't cover is there are paths leading up from the bottom of the room uh, in case the player does fall or jump down there. Um, they can get back up without having to die. Um, However, if they keep falling down there, or if they stay down there for too long, they will die and respawn at the last checkpoint or the last console that they interacted with. Uh, so jumping up to the second console. So as you can see here, the last matinee that played is now actually reversing. Uh, after that finishes reversing, it goes and plays the next one. Um, and this is a good example of the camera. It's moving and uh, rotating to show all of the columns that are being constructed. Um, at this point, I could go back down to the first console. Um, however, this video is going to be s somewhat long, uh, so simply for time's sake, I'm not going to reset the room, uh, because once again, then I would have to get back up to the second console and restart the entire puzzle for this room. Um, anyways, so here is the last matinee that played. Uh, now in reverse, and then the next one, uh, once again, really focusing on that red console in the left-hand corner now, um, and then it brings in the other one in the right-hand corner. Um, if you look over there, it kind of looks like you might be able to make it. Um, however, once you get closer, you can tell that uh, that console's just too high up, uh, too far away to really make the jump. Um, so even if the player goes over there, they realize very quickly that they can't make it, and they come back to this one. Um, once again, I made it so all the consoles that you have interacted with in this room um, stay green. That way the player knows what consoles that they have already interacted with and what ones they still need to. Uh, so getting into this second to last matinee for this room, uh, this is the large one. Um, once again, 53 columns uh, that are cons uh, that are included in this matinee. Uh, it's a very large one. Um, so as you can see, kind of going along this wall path. Um, and if I continue along it, uh, I can simply jump down to this one and make it up here. Here. However, if I was to have fallen down or if I jumped down to a lower path, uh, all I have to do is come over to this pillar right here, and I have to get up to that one there in front of me. Um, it is a long jump. 
you do have to space it just right, but as you can see, you can just make it. Um, so it is possible. Um, however, it is a much more difficult jump, being kind of the last main puzzle of this room. Uh, so once again, that's kind of the pinnacle of the difficulty. Um, from here on out, uh, there's just a simple path that is set up to lead the player back to the first console, and from the first console to the exit of this room. And then, actually, this camera shot um, was played with a little bit more. Um, it was actually, the movements were recorded with the directive, director, I'm sorry, uh, with the director active, um, allowing me to manually move it around to keyframe locations um, versus moving it to locations and then adding keyframes um, through the typical um, UI controls um, because with the director active um, and actively on that camera you can actually move it around using the WASD move commands um, to the position that you want and then add the keyframe um, allowing you to get that kind of precise exact movement um, that you want and that was kind of what I tinkered with with that last matinee there. So as you can see here with this room um, we've got the path kind of laid out before us. If we take note of it, that makes it a little bit easier um, simply because uh, by remembering where it, uh, how it's set up, uh, we can more quickly traverse the room. Whereas if we don't pay so much attention, we can easily learn through trial and error without taking too much longer, but it still does add time, um, still does take longer to get through it. Um, so as you can see, there is one on the right two uh, actual pedestals on the left, another one on the right, one on the left, and then one in the center. So once we step in here, we see the room being constructed, um, or now that the room's complete, it all looks the same. Um, so once again, if we took note, like we did, uh, we can more easily tell which uh, or where the actual uh, pedestals are. Um, one on the right, and then one on the left. Oh, I just barely missed it. Um, but as you can see, I'm traversing the room pretty quickly um, without too much difficulty. Uh, let's see. So it should be right here. Yep. So as you can see, since we took note, pretty easy to get all the way across. However, if we were to have just kind of run in... Um, as you can see, the false floors that fall away, they don't respawn or reconstruct themselves. Um, they do stay fallen. Uh, this allows for it not to be too punishing for those players that don't really pay mind or uh, take note of which ones are the correct or um, actual paths that the player can jump on. Um, that way, it doesn't take you too much longer to get through this room, um, but once again, it does take a little bit longer. Uh, that was kind of the whole design concept for it. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching this video as well as any of my previous videos that I've been going over some of my game scripting stuff. Um, I probably won't be making too many here in the near future. Um, I've got some stuff coming up and it's going to take up a lot more of my free time. Um, but once again, I would like to thank you for watching these. I really appreciate the support. Um, if there's anything that you want me to cover um, or kind of touch on that you saw in my levels but I didn't really elaborate on, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. I will either uh, respond back to it or make another video uh, elaborating on it and kind of going over some of the concepts and how I did those. Um, but yeah, so once again, just thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching these videos, and I will see you in the next one.